Thanks to Curiosity Stream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey yo, it's Diana, and you're watching Physics Girl, and I'm back home on Kauai at my childhood home visiting my parents for the holidays, which is why I'm filming in this bush. And these guys are everywhere. Anyways, you're watching Physics Girl, and I want to get right to the money shot for you because I think that this is one of the coolest things we've ever filmed. <gasps> This is really cool. You're gonna see ferrofluid droplets fall onto magnets and find out how that's related to the epic death when you fall into a black hole. I showed this footage to a bunch of friends and no one knew what was going on. So I have to set this up for you. I visited the YouTube space in LA to film with my friend William Osman, who I did the recent sand fluidization video with. It was so fun. William had gotten some time on the high speed camera and so given some time with the Phantom, what else would you film besides ferrofluid? For the uninitiated and ugh, how could there still be any of you left? Ferrofluid is an oily substance that sticks very strongly to magnets. I warned the guys very sternly to keep the ferrofluid far from the magnets until we were ready to use it because it's so easy to accidentally get it stuck on the magnet. <gasps> oh, <laughs> well, it could be better. I got an idea. What if I try to soak up stuff on the other side? Oh, no. Yeah, it'll just take a lot of paper towels. But it's got some really fun properties. Oh, it's going right through the paper oh, towel. Yeah. Oh, wow. Whoa. It's like slamming it into the... Yeah. And you can make it sing. You can just, they're like, they're like flying off. Yeah. But most importantly, it forms these unbelievably crazy spikes in the presence of a magnetic field. And so I wanted to drop the ferrofluid to watch the splashing dynamics with and without the magnet. Okay, time for the footage. But wait, it's a little confusing what you're looking at in these shots. So let me explain the setup real quick. We dropped the ferrofluid onto a styrofoam plate, but in a few cases, there was a strong neodymium magnet underneath the plate. And in a few, there wasn't. I'll make it clear which is which. Now the footage. But as you watch, something strange is gonna happen. So I wanna see if you can catch it. So I'm not gonna tell you what to look for. Okay, here you go. The beauty of physics. Did you see it? Tell me what you saw. Down there in the comments. Maybe you saw something that I didn't notice. We saw this. Oh wait, are you saying like the drop is getting stretched yeah, it out? Yeah, it's elongated. Whoa. Oh my god. Okay, that's really I was really wondering, weird. I was, the droplet becomes elongated like a football. The American kind. Or like a grain of rice. The international kind. Isn't that weird? Ah. The magnet is pulling on the entire droplet, so you could imagine that the droplet would get compressed. But as you know, the closer you are to a magnet, the stronger the attraction. The magnet is pulling on the bottom of the droplet harder than on the top of the droplet, so the bottom is actually falling faster than the top. I wish that we had tested a water droplet next to the ferrofluid droplet so that you could see that the ferrofluid is not in free fall. It's actually going faster than free fall, and it would zoom right past a normal water droplet. Ugh next time. Okay, so the top of the droplet can't keep up with the bottom of the droplet because it's not accelerating as fast, which means the entire droplet gets stretched out. Okay, now let's use our imagination. If you swap out the magnet for the moon and the droplet for Earth, you get a situation that describes exactly why we have tides. So if you think about it, the Earth is essentially falling towards the moon because of gravity, but they don't ever actually collide because the moon is moving so fast sideways that it's in orbit. So the moon's gravity pulls on different regions of Earth differently and pulls harder on the oceans closer to the moon than on the Earth itself, which makes this happen, right? Not quite right, because there are two tides in a day. This is not intuitive. Okay, let's do this. Let's replace Earth with me and two unsuspecting members of my family. Gravitational forces, like magnetic forces, depend on distance. The further away from the moon, the weaker the force will be. So the force on dad is the weakest, the force on me is meh, and the force on mom is the strongest. As time passes, mom will reach the moon much faster. Let's see that now from Earth's, or our, perspective. The distance increases between me and my parents, so the high tides are just like high school graduation. They are the result of one tide being pulled away from the Earth, which is being pulled away from the other 
other tide. So Earth's water gets pushed down from the poles onto the sides of the Earth. So if you imagine the oceans as a ferrofluid droplet encasing the Earth, that droplet gets elongated, and where it's elongated is where the high tides happen. One more crazy thing about tidal forces. That's the name that we give these gravitational forces that are a differential strength across a body and cause differential pulling. The tidal forces from a black hole are strong. They're so strong that the difference between the forces on your head and your feet would be enough to pull you apart. This unfortunate circumstance has been termed spaghettification. And we're seeing spaghettification in action with the ferrofluid. How crazy is that? Epic black hole death modeled right there at the YouTube space. Okay, enough about my love for playing with ferrofluid. People have gotten real creative with the actual uses of ferrofluid in industry. For example, it could be used as a construction material inside your eyeball. The idea is that you would guide the the ferrofluid using a magnet inside your body to patch a hole in the retina or something. Again, this is a proposed use. This is not something happening at your local doctor's office. I've been obsessed with fluid dynamics lately. I actually just went to a fluid dynamics research conference and a couple of you guys came and said hi. Thank you if you said hi to me, but the reaction was mostly like, what are you doing here? I just wanted to see the research, okay? It's interesting stuff. But what I realized at this conference is that there's so much more research than you would expect that goes into droplets and splashing dynamics. Okay, that's that's all I've got for splashes and ferrofluid. Or is it? I couldn't help myself. I set up my high-speed little camera and dropped a bunch of things to watch them splash, so please listen to these fun announcements while watching crazy footage of droplets. Physics Girl has been accepting subtitle submissions. Thank you so, 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 so much to those of you who have reached out and submitted subtitles already. If you speak another language, you can submit translations for subtitles using the link in the description. Thanks to John for filming at the YouTube space and to Cameron Esikoff for operating the Phantom camera. And William also filmed a video while we were there. They dropped their year-old trailer park gingerbread creation and we filmed that in slow motion. Check it out. I'll put a link to his channel and that video in the description. Thank you for making physics a part of your day and happy physicsing. I'm trying out different slogans. I don't know. I think it's time for a new one. Happy physicsing just makes no sense. Okay, that's all. Except thank you to Curiosity Stream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. I recommend checking out The Hunt for Dark Matter. Get unlimited access today, and for our audience, the first two months are free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash physicsgirl and use the promo code physicsgirl during the sign up process.